Welcome back to Shakes here. We're still working on Julius Caesar and we get to hear yet again from Marcus Brutus in Act 2, Scene 1 because dude has a lot of monologues in this play. So Act 2 started out with Brutus at home by himself and then he asked his servant Lucius for a candle and he muses that Caesar might be getting too big for his britches so they should kill him now before he gets too big for his britches. And then Lucius comes in with a candle and says, yes, it is the 15th of March and I found this piece of paper and Brutus yesterday was, was reading this piece of paper um, and, and which had been written by Cassius and carefully placed so that Brutus would see it so that he would think that all of the Romans also want Brutus to, you know, kill Caesar and all that sort of thing. And then Lucius comes back and he's like, yeah, it's the 15th of March and there's all these people at the door and Brutus is like, do you recognize him? And he's like, well, it's Cassius and a bunch of other guys that like have their hoods pulled up so I couldn't tell who they are. And Brutus is like, it must be the conspirators. And it is, they all come in. It's um, Sella and, or Cinna, Metellus Simber, um, Cassius, Casca, whole bunch, whole bunch of them, um, Decius Brutus, if I didn't say him already, anyway, a whole bunch of them come in, and they all do, like, the introductions, Trebonius is there, and, um, Cassius takes Brutus off so they can have a secret little powwow over here. Meanwhile, the ones that are left are like, is that way east? No, I think that way is east. It's a very weird little tidbit to put in there, but they're just sort of killing time while this little powwow is happening over here. And when they come back from this powwow, Brutus is very gung-ho to kill Caesar. And they're like, all right, let's, let's swear an oath that we're all going to do it. And Brutus says, no, not an oath. If not the face of men, the sufferance of our souls, the time's abuse... If these be motives weak, break off betimes, and every man hence to his idle bed. So let high-sided tyranny range on till each man drop by lottery. But if these, as I am sure they do, bear fire enough to kindle cowards and to steal with valor the melting spirits of women, then countrymen... What need we any spur but our own cause to prick us to redress? What other bond than secret Romans that have spoke the word and will not palter? And what other oath than honesty to honesty engaged that this shall be or we will fall for it? Swear priests and cowards and men caudalous, old feeble carrions and such suffering souls that welcome wrongs, Unto bad causes swear such creatures as men doubt. But do not stain the even virtue of our enterprise, nor the insuppressive metal of our spirits, to think that or our cause or our performance did need an oath, when every drop of blood that every Roman bears and nobly bears is guilty of a several bastardy if he do break the smallest particle of any promise that have passed from him. So basically he's saying, like, we owe this to each other and just the fact that we're here and we're talking about it and, and that we're Roman and that the people around us are suffering, we don't need to swear an oath to do this. If we, if we don't do this, then we are guilty to the core of letting down our fellow humans. Kind of a powerful speech. And they respond by saying, so do, let's get Cicero on our side. And the, a couple of them are like, yeah, let's get Cicero, let's get Cicero. And they're like, no, 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 he, he never follows along with anything that anybody else does. Okay, so leave Cicero out. And then Decius Brutus steps up and says, so should we're we're only killing caesar right right i mean he mark antony are pretty close and then brutus has some thoughts on that as well and we will get to hear those thoughts tomorrow so yeah i'll see you tomorrow for more Mwah.